Thanks to our title sponsor, Juniper Networks, for helping make Research Saturday possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CyberWire's Research Saturday. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is our weekly conversation with researchers and analysts tracking down threats and vulnerabilities, solving some of the hard problems of protecting ourselves in a rapidly evolving cyberspace. Thanks for joining us. We do the triage, looking at the sample, and if it does something analysis, we take the sample for further investigation. This is one of the samples that cut our interest. That's Hossein Jazi. He's a senior threat intelligence analyst at Malwarebytes. The research we're discussing today is titled Retro Hunting APT 37. North Korean APT used VBA self decode technique to inject rock rat. And now, a quick word about our sponsor, Juniper Networks. NSS Labs gave Juniper its highest rating of recommended in its recent data center security gateway test. To get your copy of the NSS Labs report, visit juniper.net slash secure DC or connect with Juniper on Twitter or Facebook. That's juniper.net slash secure DC. And we thank Juniper for making it possible to bring you Research Saturday. And now, a message from our sponsor, Tanium. In a distributed cloud-based world, managing and protecting endpoints has never been more important. The Tanium endpoint platform provides real-time visibility, comprehensive control, and rapid response for endpoints across distributed operations. That's why the Department of Defense and half of the Fortune 100 trust Tanium to secure and manage their IT operations. Want to try for yourself? Visit Tanium.com slash Cyberwire to get a 14-day free trial of Tanium as a service. That's Tanium.com slash Cyberwire. And we thank Tanium for sponsoring our show. And I took the sample and I started to do a further analysis and then figure out, okay, this is something interesting related to an APT. And that was where, that was the time that I started to look for more analysis and preparing a blog on that. And is your sense that that this is a a particularly targeted campaign that they're going after specific individuals here? Yeah, uh, we believe this attack was the target of this attack was the government of South Korea. And it's really aligned with the interest of this state sponsor, APT, that is targeting government of South Korea. Sorry. Well, let's go through it together. I mean, there are, mm-hmm. there are a lot of uh, steps here and uh, some really interesting technical things that you all have uh, discovered here. Um, why don't we walk it through step by step? I mean, uh, if I'm if I'm the the target of these folks, uh, mm-hmm. how are they typically going to uh, to start their interaction with me? Okay, so I would like to a little bit speak about this APT and then mm-hmm. go through this attack. So okay. APT thirty seven is one of the most sophisticated North Korean threat actors that has been active since at least twenty twelve. This group, also known as Scarcraft, Group 123, a Reaper, or Jung Seong 121. And it, this group is mainly targeted South Korea, like the attack we analyzed, it was, the target was South Korea. But this group also has targeted several other countries, such as Vietnam, Japan, uh, China, some countries in the Middle East. So... The main initial infection vector used by this actor is mainly spear phishing emails, Uh, but they also use some other techniques such as a strategic web compromise in which they compromise their website to host their malware or host the malicious document. So the one we analyzed, we believe it was started with spear phishing attacks. So they sent an email to victim and it might be they might attach the malicious document directly to the email, but 
this actor has used the links to host the malicious document in Google Drive in the past. So since we didn't have access to the email, phishing email, I cannot say which one, but one of them, uh, possible, possibly they use one of these techniques to send the email. So the attack, as I said, started by sending a phishing email, which, which has an a document attachment or uh, has a link that redirects the victim to download the document. Mm -hmm. And usually this group mainly use a, a Hangul document, which is a popular word processor in South Korea. But this one was interesting one and they use of Microsoft Office to start their attack. This is not the first time that they use this Microsoft Office, but this is not the common one. So. Yeah, well, I mean, let's continue down that path. So I, mm -hmm. I get hit with this spear phishing email and, uh, and I take the bait and I, I click on the link. What happens next? So, yeah. So if we assume that if the phishing email contains a malicious document, then you, the victim clicks the document and open the document and document asks you to enable content. So when you enable the content, the macro is executed in the background and perform some malicious activity, which in this case, it injected a payload into not, Notepad. But what was interesting is the technique that used in malicious macro. So the technique we call that self, VBA self-decode. Yeah, so l let's go through that together. This, as you mentioned, this self-decoding technique is, is fascinating because you've got VBA macros inside of VBA macros. Yeah. Take us through this step-by-step. Yeah, sure. So VBA self-decoding is a technique that in which a malicious macro is embedded within another macro and then is executed dynamical, dynamically without being written into the disk. So in, in other words, we can consider this one as an implementation of Packer technology within Microsoft Office. So here there is an unpacker stop, which is a macro that unpack or decodes the malicious macro and writes it into memory space of the Microsoft Office and then jumps to a start of the new macro and execute it. And so by doing this, it helps obfuscate what's going on here. But as you mentioned, it also... Uh, keeps it from being written to disk, which I suppose would be a way that anti-malware would be able to pick up on it. Yeah, exactly. Because what you see, you see the unpacker stop or a macro that unpack the macro, malicious macro. So you don't, you won't see the real macro that is being executed and you won't see what's going to happen when the macro executed. You just see the macro that doing some malicious activity, but you never know what was going to happen. So this uh, macro within a macro gets executed, and then what mm -hmm. happens next? Okay, so first of all, to execute a macro dynamically within the macro, VB object model needs to be bypassed because Microsoft Office by default disable the dynamic execution of macro. So before the decoding the macro, this malicious document or uh, bypass the VB object model by modifying its registry key. After that, it does the process of decoding and the, the process of decoding, they have a custom decoder that decode the macro. So when they decode the macro, they create a module within the space of Microsoft Office and jump to a start of the new macro. This is where main malicious behavior happening. So here there is a shell code that will be injected to Notepad. Notepad. So they create a process, which is a target process, and it's Notepad here, and then uh, create a memory space within the Notepad, and then eject the shell code into that memory by calling write process memory, and then execute that shell code within the notepad process by calling resume thread. So what this shell code is, does is going to bit.ly that redirect uh, the machine to a Google Drive to download the 
final payload, which is a variant of Rockrack. So this is the like clever technique used by this attacker that used the URL shortener to hide the URL that they are contacting and then uh, hosted their payload into Google Drive. So it looks legitimate and nothing malicious. And the payload hosted in Google Drive is encrypted. So it won't flag by Google to be malicious. So then they take the, the shell code, take the payload, decrypt that payload and execute it. Mm. And so what is the functionality there of Rockrat? So Rockrat is a, a cloud-based rat that first, I think, used by this APG around 2017. But the main functionality of this rat is to uh, steal information from the victim. So it has the capability to take a screenshots of the victim. It has capability to record audio. It has capability to steal credentials from the browser and then send those collected info to cloud services such as pCloud, Yandex, Box, Dropbox. So this is another clever technique used by Rockrat to communicate, uh, to perform CNC communication uh, through cloud services. So as still they are trying to hide or pretend that their command and control communication is legit. Hmm. Now, the system itself, I mean, as it's going through this process, it, it's checking to see if it's running, for example, in a, in, a, in a sandbox or something like that. I mean, it's trying to, to hide itself. Yeah, so, you know, most of the APT is trying to detect anti-analysis or check if they are running in the uh, sandbox environment. So this is the same. So they are check, doing some basic checks, such as, uh, looking if they are running on the debugger by call, using the API, like is, is debugger present or get the count or also check for VMware specific files or looking for different DLLs. And if they found those artifacts, they won't show the behavior. So how successful is this, uh, this system, you know, from going, going through the various steps here? How successful is it at evading detection? I think this, is, this would be really successful for several reasons. First of all, they started attack by VBA self-decoding technique. So assume that we, they carefully crafted the document to convince uh, the victim to click the enable the content, which is the main step, then they can uh, be like perform behavior like in a covert uh, be like a structure. So you cannot, it, it would be really hard for defender to figure out if this is a legit or malicious behavior because of it spawns Notepad and then inject a uh, payload within Notepad and the C2 communications are going to cloud services, which uh, looks legit. And also the payload downloaded from the Google Drive. So all looks legit and pretends to be legit or uh, legitimate communication. So uh, I think it would be a successful attack. Well, what are your recommendations then for folks to best protect themselves? So this technique can easily bypass a static and signature-based detection. So oh, the recommendation would be uh, monitor dynamic behavior of Microsoft Office. So on that way, you will figure out, oh, there is something happening in this machine because Microsoft Office spawned Notepad, which is not something normal. And then Notepad is doing some communication, is still sending some files from my machine to a cloud service. I know I'm using, for example, Box, but why there are some files transferring to the Box from my machine to a Box that I don't know. So I think dynamic analysis would help figure out or defeat this attack.
Our thanks to Hossein Jazi from Malwarebytes for joining us. The research is titled Retro Hunting APT 37. North Korean APT used VBA self-decode technique to inject rock rat. We'll have a link in the show notes. Thanks to Juniper Networks for sponsoring our show. You can learn more at juniper.net slash security or connect with them on Twitter or Facebook. Thanks to Tanium for their sponsorship. Learn more about Tanium as a service and sign up for a 14-day free trial at tanium.com slash cyberwire. The Cyberwire Research Saturday is proudly produced in Maryland out of the startup studios of Data Tribe, where they're co-building the next generation of cybersecurity teams and technologies. Our amazing Cyberwire team is Elliot Peltzman, Peru Prakash, Kelsey Bond, Tim Nodar, Joe Kerrigan, Carol Terrio, Ben Yellen, Nick Vilecki, Gina Johnson, Bennett Moe, Chris Russell, John Petrick, Jennifer Iben, Rick Howard, Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. <laughs> ¶¶